Uh, good evening. Welcome to Phoenix, Arizona and the Arizona Deliverance Center. Tonight is a seminar night and uh, we're going to go over some controversial things tonight. So I'm going to lose a few friends here and there, but I'll gain a few on the other end. That's how you do it. I'm treading water. <laughs> All right. Let's get going here because we've got a a lot of stuff to discuss. I'm going to kind of open it up to questions right out of the gate. So uh, thank you for coming tonight. <clears throat> I do my announcements first. The Divine Healing Seminar is in September. There it is. Next month. Uh, I'm on now uh, the radio every day, seven days a week and twice on Sundays on 10, 10 a.m. I'm always on the radio on the Internet 24-7. Omni. Uh, 48,000 48 I had 48,000 listeners last week on dark sky that's a secular internet radio thing goes all over the world most of my listeners are in Dallas yeah not Phoenix I'm popular in Dallas <laughs> Most of my listeners on that were in uh, not the United States, in India. I got a lot of. Fun. I'm a multicultural type person. Hey, would you like to help the ministry out? If you buy stuff on Amazon, you just go to smileamazon.com and put in our ministry name, and they pay us when you buy stuff. Tonight's teaching will be on uh, House of Healing AZ. Our YouTube teaching channel should be on there tomorrow or so, or tomorrow afternoon, or whenever it gets up there. If you need a self deliverance miracle list, please send me an email, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send you one. And you can get delivered at home. I send these out about a dozen or so a week, go out. Maybe one or two people might actually do it because uh, it's not a light switch fix type of thing. It's a, actually something you have to do that would take some effort on your part. And most Christians, they're not interested in something that takes effort. They want something, you know, to eat right now. And that's why you go through the drive through Every time I take my daughter out, Tracy, we go out somewhere and eat, and then we go get dessert at McDonald's. And we go through the drive-thru, and I order a ice cream cone, 57 cents. I want the ice cream cone now. I want it fast. I want to get through there and get out, period. And most Christians treat their Christian life like me at McDonald's in the drive-thru. They want it done now. They want it fixed quickly. And spiritual things, unfortunately, don't work that way. It requires effort, solid free will, determination, repentance, desire, motivation. Without those things, Christianity is as useless as all the other religions. They don't work. Don't work. Got sidetracked there. Sorry about that. Yeah, I wrote three books. They're in the the uh, bookstore. One's on men cure of mental illness. One's on divine healing. The other's on the devil. Uh, the deliverance training course is also in the uh, bookstore. And uh, remember our Thursday night's healing room? That thing's booming with Brother Rick. He's killing that thing. Heavily anointed. Wow, amazing things happen in that service. Please send somebody to the mental illness healing room. Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. No, no charge. It's free. Don't sit home and stay sick. Okay? Thank you for your donations. They're all on the uh, doors. Hey, can somebody do me a favor and go run? Just shut these doors here while we're going here. There's three of them. They're still up. Gina, can you do that? Just shut these three doors. Thank you. 
and you can donate on the website gracias hey there it is you know I've been watching TV preachers for decades now I watch them just to get an idea of what they're doing and how they're doing it I like to see what they're talking about how they run their services what they're teaching on what they're asking for I just kind of you know put stuff in the back of my mind and you know these TV preachers are always coming up with something new they always come up with a different odd doctrine the reason for that is uh, you have to sell stuff okay you can't just come up with the same thing all the time it won't sell so you got to come up with new stuff see so I've been watching that for years and I'm sick of it uh, I'm tired of them getting all the new stuff I decided to do it I've now created my own doctrine that's right and I'll be putting it on DVDs and CDs and I'll be selling them and I'm gonna buy a yacht and I'm gonna have yacht revivals yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah take that creep flow that's right tonight I unveil my own doctrine I made up that's right the pre tribulation I'm gonna patent it and sell it and I'm getting me a jet I'm leaving you people behind <laughs> yes sir all right, the events that occur just before Christ return, returns, what are those? Let's do some uh, preliminary research here. The second coming of Christ, every Christian believes in. 99 point and something percent. There's no dispute in Christianity from Episcopals to prophetics. Everybody believes that. Is there anybody here that does not believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back again someday and set up his kingdom on this planet earth raise your hand No hands went up see I'm prophetic Everybody agrees on that. Here's what they don't agree on is the rapture Some people don't believe it exists, but there's basically three versions of it generally speaking but the Greek word parousia is the second coming of Christ and everybody believes that it's very plain in Scripture that he's coming back someday to reset the order on the planet earth there's seven judgments in Scripture one of them is the judgment of the nations and that occurs at the second coming of Christ the parousia okay now if you're a Bible student and you study the Scripture You've got an idea when that's going to happen because there's a series of footprints in the sand that lead you right up to the second coming yes, yes. so I can stand here tonight and tell you the second coming is not going to happen tomorrow right. it can't happen tomorrow it cannot happen tomorrow why? Because there are certain things that have to occur before the parousia. Correct? Yes. And they have not happened yet. I just picked out a few and I just listed a couple here. There's more of them, but you know, the screen's not obviously big enough to put it up there. But Mystery Babylon has to come to power where all the major religions on the planet Earth. Boom. Okay. Uh, Babylon, the city itself, has to be rebuilt. It's currently in, being built right now. But it's not finished yet. So I know that Babylon, since it's not rebuilt yet, no second coming. Can't happen. Uh, the temple, the fourth one, has to be rebuilt. The Jews... In Israel currently have all the architectural drawings and work done for the fourth temple it's all ready to go the mosque of Omar is sitting on the Temple Mount and that thing's gonna get torn down and replaced the Bible says it is 
but it hasn't been replaced yet so what's that telling me the parousia cannot come next week or next month The evacuation of Israel and the abomination of death of uh, Desolation has not occurred yet Correct If you read Daniel and Ezekiel Revelation these uh, teachings clearly show clearly show these things have to happen before Christ comes back So I know it's not going to happen and if I'm alive during the tribulation or if I have to go through the tribulation If you have any knowledge of the Bible you can watch for these signs as we were told to do Right, and you can kind of predict hey the second coming is getting close here This is rebuilt that happened The Antichrist came to power. I mean I left off a bunch of them, but there's a whole bunch of things that have to happen before the second coming of the parousia occurs and We know it can't be done in, in a year or two. This is not it's not going to happen How'd that go All right now the rapture on the other hand is another controversy Generally speaking, there's three concepts of it. There's a pre-trib right there's a mid-trib and there's a post-trib <clears throat> Now, which one of these is accurate? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I don't have all the answers. I kind of lean toward pre-trib, but if you lean toward pre-trib like I do, there's some odd questions you have to answer that I can't answer. For example, there are people being born again during the tribulation. There's 144,000 Jews that are saved during the tribulation. There are martyrs that happen during the tribulation. What happens to them? Uh, are they how are they resurrected if the resurrection of the saints occurs at the beginning of the tribulation? Then you've got those odd questions. You can't answer if it's at the end of the tribulation You can almost predict when it's going to happen And Jesus said no man that no, they don't know what the hour they but no, that's not true You can if you're if you're a student of the Bible and it's post trib you can pretty much predict it Because the same things would have to occur For the rapture that occurs for the second coming If they both occur at about the same time The theory is that the Post-trib rapture occurs. I don't know the day before or the same day or something like that I don't exactly know uh, What they think it what day it is, but presumably it's at a similar point in time Mid-trib not too many people buy that one, but the reason that one's popular is because According to Daniel the first half of the tribulation is not a nightmare on Elm Street It's the second half. That's when hell comes to breakfast All right my new doctrine Is the pre-tribulation See we're already in the pre-tribulation and God showed me that the stuff happening in the tribulation starts to happen before the tribulation These DVDs are going to fly off the shelves I'm going to have to take yacht lessons I'm going to get a cap Here's what God showed me everything happened in the pre in the tribulation starts in the pre-trib It's already started for example Mystery Babylon is not here yet, but it's already started. Chrislam's here. They're trying to mix Christianity and Islam, and they're trying to blend them together by taking the parts they agree on in each religion, and let's not fight over it. Correct? It's already started in the pre-tribulation. Thank you, Brother Mike. This is great. This is going to take off. 
It's like these waves a Surfing wave doesn't start out as a surfer. It starts out small The mystery of iniquity already works the Antichrist spirits are already here even though the Antichrist is not here yes, We're in the pre-tribulation and there are Antichrist spirits running like crazy in America. Jesus is persona non grata here anymore you mentioned Islam or some other religion. Oh, that's fine. You mentioned Jesus or Christ. Oh, take that down. Get rid of that. It's already started. We're already in the pre-tribulation. This thing is starting to wrap up. It's not a wave where you can surf yet, but you can see it down there forming. Iniquity will abound and the love of many will wax cold. It's already started. We're in the pre-tribulation. It's happening everywhere All the things in the tribulation God showed me start before the tribulation it doesn't just suddenly click and there it is it ramps up That's how we know we're getting close to the end Second advent of Jesus Christ the parousia. What are those signs? Well, let's go through them real quickly Matthew 24. These are Jesus words there shall arise false Christ and false prophets Showing great signs and wonders, okay, that's already started It's not there yet, but it's already started There's a bunch of weird things going on in the church it already started in the charismatic movement people were Finding gems in their church angel feathers were falling out of the ceiling Gold dust was blowing out of people's ears Now those aren't great signs and wonders because we're in the pre-tribulation not the tribulation See the strange fire miracles have already started here and they ramp up when the false prophet arrives on the scene in the middle of the tribulation Jesus said in so much that if possible they will deceive the very elect once he talked about they're all the Jews they're going to be deceived by the Antichrist and the false prophet but in the pre-tribulation it's already happening there's already fake Jesus Christ popping up all over the country they're already here here they are this guy here has millions of followers in the Philippines. He says he's the son of God John Miller in Australia has thousands of followers David Shaler the guy on YouTube has virtually no followers, but he thinks he's Jesus <laughs> He thinks he's Jesus Maurice Clemens the guy that shot all them cops. He said he's Christ He's got a bunch of followers in prison Jesus Le Luis de Miranda in Florida had tens of thousands of followers. He said he was Jesus Christ. One day in the service, they said, uh, "Hey, uh, we forgot to tell you this. Uh, he died of liver cancer a few months ago. Kind of a shocker there, but he he said he was Jesus, and they believed him. Who believed him? One or two kooks and a minister? Absolutely not. Tens of thousands of people." In Florida believed that guy was divine Michael Trevesser got out of prison what a year or so ago. He had the doomsday cult in New Mexico He said he was Christ He had hundreds of followers went to prison for uh, Child abuse sexual abuse They let him out. I think uh, a Year or two ago because he had skin cancer Jesus coming down with skin cancer, okay, not a good Marketing thing no, not working, but see it's not the tribulation. It's the pre-tribulation We're in the pre-tribulation Jesus was talking about the tribulation where everybody would come and say they're Christ But it's already started people think they're Jesus Say there it is. I see a yacht in my future Here's how this thing works <clears throat> I want to sit and talk to you for a minute <clears throat> 
years ago, let's say, let's, let's go back to 2004. I got delivered from demons in 2004. And then in 2005, I started doing deliverances for other people. And I would drive all around Maricopa County, visit these people in their homes. Then I did that in 2006. And then we decided to open up the House of Healing over on uh, Indian School there. And when we opened up the House of Healing, there was a lady, a preacher there who was a friend of mine. Her name was uh, Cheryl Davies. And so I was trying to help her get her ministry going. And I was doing my counseling ministry over there then, but I didn't have any services over there then. So she started her ministry there in 2006, and then she moved her ministry over to, I can't remember if it was Chandler or Gilbert or something like that, over in the, that part of the valley. And then in 2007, I took over her teaching and preaching on, on Sunday nights. And that's when when I started doing this kind of stuff here. And I started doing the PowerPoint and doing deliverances and different things. Uh, in 2006 or so, uh, my wife uh, got interested in prophetics. And I took a look at it and I thought, well, that's, that looks like a good idea. I mean, these people, are, they love God. They're all excited and they're enthusiastic. So we started attending uh, Patricia King services. And at that time, uh, I don't know where she is now, but at that time her ministry was in Maricopa. And uh, I met her a couple of times. I thought she was a great person. Uh, friendly, loving, smart. Uh, I really liked her. So we started going to these Prophetic seminars. I didn't know anything about prophetics, and I met them. They seemed like great people. Uh, they were excited about God. They all seemed like they loved the Lord. And my wife even went to a women's seminar uh, over there. I can't remember where it was held, but it was like a two or three day thing. And uh, I went to a Todd Bentley service. And this was in, I think, 2000. 2007 and it was over in Tempe somewhere. I can't remember where we were. But there was a, it was a big crowd There it was like 300 people there and uh, Patricia King was there. She was hosting the event and uh, Todd was there for three days. We went to all three days and uh, He uh, the second day they were passing around pictures in the uh, uh, Seminar someone had in the stood in the back and was taking pictures of the of the uh, Todd Bentley when he was up there teaching and there were orbs all through the room there were like they were balls of like uh, light weird uh, they were kind of like Christmas and they were all through the room they were everywhere and they were passing these pictures around I looked at them I didn't think much of them I didn't know what they were I didn't know anything about uh, what was going on there on the third day Todd Bentley had an altar call, and it was unbelievable. He uh, had everybody line up in rows all through the uh, service. It was like, I don't know, seven rows all the way through the facility. And they were, you know, uh, 20, 30 people, something what, per row. And then he went down each aisle and put his hands on everybody in the service. And... Uh, at least at least two-thirds of them collapsed on the ground Hit the deck and I'm looking at that and I'm, I don't know. I I guess that's the anointing. That's incredible and then I kept watching and uh, He came over and put his hands on my wife uh, nothing happened uh, After that was over. I was looking around at all the bodies on the floor. I mean they were everywhere and some of them were twitching and jumping and going like that and making noises and ho and they were grinding and it was all over the place. I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what was happening. I'm just watching it and said, "Well, they said, hey, this is this is what God does and this is the Holy Spirit moving." I had no uh, information to contradict it because I I had never been exposed to it before and I was ignorant. I was ignorant. 
And uh, uh, the following year, after I took over the teaching at the House of Healing from Cheryl, before I did that, I was in one of Cheryl's services, and back then we we only had fifty seats, so uh, it was just like this section here that was the House of Healing. You know, I'm sitting in the back. Cheryl's up here teaching. And she stops and looks at the back, at the door in the back, and I'm sitting right beside the door. And Cheryl goes, a deliverance angel just walked into our building. She announces it to everybody there. We had, you know, 20, 25 people at every one of her services. Yeah, they were, they were, and we had people healed. She prayed for people and they got healed. She, we had some deliverances. This went on for like a year. Well, I'm sitting back there, and I'm sitting by the door. I look up to see where this angel is, and I, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything, but I'm thinking, well, that's not, I don't have an anointing for that, so that's no big deal. So this is going to be a great service. I'm expecting a blowout altar call. For crying out loud, there's a deliverance angel walked into the room. <laughs> this isn't me praying for somebody. For God's sakes, the Holy Ghost sent a deliverance angel. And he walked right by me. I'm sitting by the door. The altar call comes along. Nobody got healed. Nobody got delivered. It was dead. Through the whole altar call, I'm looking around for this angel. <laughs> the guy bailed on me. I was expecting a massive move of... The Holy Ghost. Yeah. 2008 rolls around. Todd Bentley pops up again. He's doing Lakeland, Florida. There's a massive revival going on there. I'm doing my counseling appointments during the day. They're going great. People are getting delivered and healed one after the other. I go home every night. I'm watching the Lakeland revival. I watch everything that goes on because I like to watch stuff to pick up stuff you can learn from. I like to watch other ministers. I watch different services. You know, I'm kind of like an auditor. <laughs> if you see me following you home, I'm, I'm an audio. Yeah. So every night I'm watching the Lakeland Robot. And I'm watching them. Odd things are happening. Most of it's kind of normal, but things are weird. Uh, things that I didn't understand were happening. Uh, partial healings, uh, strange manifestations, all kinds of different stuff. So I don't know anything about it. Well, a woman comes to see me at the beginning of the revival, and she comes in, and I do an interview of her, and she seems like a great person. She's a minister from a famous prophetic ministry, local one. She came over from that ministry. She was one of the lay ministers in that prophetic ministry. I don't think anything of it. I'm happy to see her. I do my interview. She seems like a nice person. She's got a good heart. Uh, she had some issues with her dad. She had a brief period of, of uh, child sexual abuse. She had a couple wounds. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, this is a routine um, deliverance at the... How's the healing? This is no problem. I'm just going to take her in the prayer room, and boom, she's going to get healed, and that's it. I, I, I'd done it dozens of times before. I'm not think I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't. There was nothing out of the ordinary, and she seemed like a good person. She seemed like somebody who loved God. She 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 uh, uh, had a nice ministry over there at this uh, prophetic ministry. So I go into. I took her in there, and I'm standing there, and I'm thinking, Lord, this is a routine deliverance here. We've got this beautiful. Serving here. She's a wonderful woman of God. Great great person. Very likable friendly That was the last normal thought I had <laughs> Pterodactyls from the Jurassic period started coming out of this woman The first one that came out startled me because her body Bowed like that off the bench. <gasps> I'll jump back. What's happening here? <clears throat> Now I'm scared. Now I need deliverance. <laughs> I thought this was a routine 
deliverance. I'd done hundreds of them. No problemo. Suddenly, monsters are coming out of this lovely, sweet person. This goes on for 45 minutes. She gets done. She's in a state of shock. She couldn't believe those things were in her. I was in a bigger state of shock. I couldn't believe those things were in her. Quickly said goodbye to her. God bless you. I bolted from my car and ran, drove home, scared. What did I just see as I'm praying all the way home? How could a perfectly lovely, normal person have been that infected? Well, this girl goes back to this prophetic minister and tells them you ain't gonna believe what happened to me over at brother Mike's ministry Shortening the story Every day all summer During the Lakeland revival well past it in 08. I think the revival started in April something like that Well, this was the summer of 08 People came from that ministry one after the other after the other two and three a day all summer long All of them were virtually the same Likeable people good people. Yeah, there was a couple flakes. Okay. I mean anytime you're processing this kind of thing You're gonna get a couple of couple of nincompoops a couple of knuckleheads a couple of <coughs> Cracked up. Yeah, I had a couple of those, but I'm talking about 90%. I'm talking about over 90% of these people coming from this prophetic ministry were like that first gal. They they loved God. They loved ministry. They loved serving. They loved this, and they had all these incredible spirits in them. Again, shortening the story here uh, because I don't want to bore you to tears. Uh, this was God teaching me this area I was ignorant in. I didn't understand how familiar spirits worked. I didn't understand how kundalini spirits worked. I was ignorant. Okay? The demons that I had been casting out for two or three or four years before that, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff. Rejection demons, fear demons, lust demons, eh, run normal deliverances. Bada boom, bada bang, whatever you call it. Bang, there they go. They're out. These demons were a horse of a different color. They were different. These spirits were smarter than the other demons. They were more powerful than the other demons. They were man big manifestors. They were uh, show-offs. They were loud. They acted a fool. They were... Deeply embedded in the person's mind the person that came to see me didn't know they had them The other ones They knew they had them. Hey brother Mike. I got a lust problem Hey brother Mike. I got anxiety The person knew they had them. They didn't maybe didn't know they had demons, but they knew they had negative symptoms <gasps> These familiar spirits know they didn't even know they were in there a Couple of quick examples. I hope I'm not boring you. Okay. Couple of just a couple of quick examples and I'll get off of it uh, I'm sitting at my desk and at that time I was mentoring a kid who had just gotten delivered from schizophrenia But he still had a, another legion in there, but he was on my ministry team and he comes in and says hey Mike I had a dream last night. What were you dreaming about? I had a dream that Todd Bentley was having sex with some woman and it wasn't his wife. I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, Todd Bentley. I said, the Todd Bentley in the Lakeland Revival right now, it's going on this right this second? Yeah, I just had that dream last night. Well, you know, he'd had schizophrenia and uh, I had just watched a couple nights ago uh, Todd Bentley getting uh, anointed as the king of the prophetics uh, all the major prophetic ministers around the United States came to came to this service and they had this incredible anointing service where they announced that he was now the the leader of their movement and he was the the biggest guy in the business and he they all got up and gave a, a prophetic word that God told them God told me that you're uh, 
you're going to be the king of the deli- uh, anointed ones. You're you're gonna your ministry is gonna boom. You're gonna get blessed. You're gonna get this. This all happened just a day or two before this guy came in to tell me he had this dream about Todd Bentley. Well, I just let the dream go. I said, "Oh, okay. Well, that's that's interesting. I hope that's not true," and I just dismissed it. Well, it wasn't two or three days later when Todd Bentley's disaster unfolded in front of everybody. The guy is having an affair with his intern, and right in the middle of the revival, okay, if anybody have to, had half a brain, you just wait till the end of it. Not this guy. Right in the middle of the revival, he runs off with his girlfriend and leaves his wife and kids. And this was a few days after my ex-schizophrenic uh, men- mentee, as a mentor, he's a mentee, comes in and tells me about this dream. I mean, it was, it was weird, real weird. Todd then leaves the revival right in the middle of it, and that thing collapses like an old mine shaft. And the humiliation and the embarrassment of what he did, particularly right after he had this service where everybody had anointed him as the king of the prophetics, a few days later he runs off with his girlfriend. No, None of those people, and by the way, all those people on stage... They called them prophets or prophetic. They were either prophets or apostles. That's how embarrassing this thing was. They were all wrong. Everybody was fooled. Nobody had any discerning of spirits. Nobody caught it. Everybody had egg all over their face. Most of you don't remember this the way you're looking at me, but anyway, this this is this happened in 2008. Okay. Uh, after this, all summer long, I'm getting all these prophetics coming in for these deliverances. And to make a long story short, short, God taught me what was going on and what was wrong with Todd Bentley. Now, here's what happened to him. I did some research into him, and I talked to some people that knew him personally. Todd Bentley had a personality that was very strong when he was a sinner. He grew up in a dysfunctional, abusive home, and everybody, based on their personality, reacts to child abuse differently. Okay, Some people go into depression. Some people sink into suicide. Other people become very volatile and angry and fight back. Well, Todd was the latter. He had an outgoing personality, and if he got involved in something, he was like gung-ho. He would... Just go all the way. He, had, he was that kind of person. Everybody's met somebody like that. As soon as they get a new idea, boom, they're, they're going. Well, that was Todd. Oh, man. He found heroin. Oh, boom. He didn't take a little heroin. He had to have the whole truck of heroin. He found alcohol. Oh, he didn't have a couple of drinks. No, nope, he needed a van full of booze. Well, he became a massive drug and alcoholic. He was a massive sex addict. He didn't want an orgasm. He wanted a carnival of orgasms. Why? His personality was chronically in overdrive. Well, God had mercy on the guy's soul, and he got saved. And he got, went through deliverance. He didn't go through the kind of deliverances that most of ours uh, here are, he went through one of those win whirly deliverances. Yeah. They start manifesting in Wynn's church. Rawr! Five guys run over to the guy. Boom, they drag him on the ground. Six guys, they got to hold him down. Win whirly's up there, bind in the spirits of the occult and witchcraft and sorcery. Come out. Rawr! The guy's going nuts on the thing. People are holding him down. It goes on for a half an hour. The guy's delivered. Win Worley service. I studied all Win Worley stuff before I got into this ministry. One of my prayers was, Lord, please, I can't do Win Worley ministry. I can't do it. Okay? I'm old. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in my mid 60s. I'm going to take some guy down. I can barely get myself out of bed to get to the potty. Two in the morning when I got to take a leak. I'm going to take you down while you're manifesting. Lord, 
we can't do this. We can't do this. And then God sent me people to help in the ministry, and most of them were women. Great, but I can't have women taking down a 250 pound manifester, knocking chairs through the window. We can't do that. Lord, I can't do that kind of ministry. I can't do it. God answered my prayer. Yeah, you sent me you guys. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. Teen challenge. I wish they were here tonight. Amen. Listen to me carefully. Todd Bentley, this whole thing with Todd Bentley, he collapsed in 08. He had collapsed again in 2013. He collapsed again this week. It's all over the internet. The guy's the guy is collapsing. Every few years, he just tanks. It's always the same thing. Alcohol, lust, all that stuff. Okay? But here's the reason for it now. People are very angry at him. They don't like him, and they're, they, they're, they're saying very bad things about him. I am not. I do like the guy. Once he went through his initial deliverance and had his massive seizure with those men, Half a legion came out of the guy, but after the demons come out, after the first deliverance session, they switch over and they whisper to the person, hey, you're feeling better, aren't you? You're doing better now in these areas. Right? Yeah, I am. I feel better. Well, we're not here anymore. We're gone. <laughs> Todd Bentley bought the lie see once you go through the first deliverance session the demons that are left in there panic and they go dormant temporarily because they don't want to get thrown out see well Todd's leadership at the time when he was a new Christian didn't understand how demons worked and they thought he was delivered too then, then, check this out. Todd attacked Christianity like he had attacked serving Satan. His personality is always in overdrive. So he became, uh, he was a super sinner, now he's a super saint. Now he wants to serve God like crazy. All he wants to do is serve Jesus. He can't wait to see the miracles and signs of God. He, he was doing all the things you hope every Christian will do. He is all in with Christ. He was all in with Satan. That's how he's built. He's always all in. Now he's all in for the Lord. Here's what happens. When somebody's a new convert, they're under a certain authority. Right? Well, if you're an enthusiastic hard driven sincere christian you're you're going to get blessings and anointings the other christians don't get so while you're being trained your anointing passes the people that were training you so the devil comes to the person and says Hey, dude, look at you're getting healings, and these people that have been in Christianity for 30 years, they're mentoring you, right? They, they're not getting the healings and miracles you're getting. Your anointing is higher than theirs. See, Paul tried to circumvent this in the, in the New Testament when he said specifically, don't put a novice in a position of authority because the devil will come along and take him apart. Well, they didn't listen. It didn't happen. Todd got here, and then he got up here. The church, through spiritual ignorance, looks at somebody who's enthusiastic and has the anointing and says, well, that person should be in the ministry. The person then says, I want to be in the ministry. Right? Because they love God and they think they're anointed and God's blessing. And why wouldn't you want to be in the ministry? So instead of having 
godly supervision telling Todd look your anointing's going great and you're doing great and we we love you and you're you're fantastic but scripturally you need to stay down here for a while as a servant and continue to learn you're not to be out in front teaching and leading because you don't have the experience to do that that's what Paul told Timothy and the Thessalonians he got loose Todd got loose not knowing the spirits that didn't come out went dormant why do they go dormant well because they have two assignments these demons have two assignments number one damn your soul to hell if they lose their first assignment and you get saved and you get born again they switch to their second assignment which is ruin your Christian life make you ineffective that's your job well they do they just switched over on Todd hey the guy got saved darn it we screwed up he got filled with the spirit oh good that's no good either and he got delivered but he thinks he's completely delivered there was the key they had to beating him so we got to get this kid in ministry so the demons promote him into ministry why the answer is obvious he, he's spread demons all through these churches he's heaped embarrassment of staggering proportions on Christianity these people over here who are spiritually ignorant and like him are supporting him claiming that all these people criticizing him are of the devil and wrong and they're not they don't they're not acting in love and blah blah and the demons are sitting there laughing their guts up because he got loose and didn't finish his deliverance he got into the ministry and took it carried over his demons from his sinful life into his Christian life then he polluted thousands. everybody else T tens of thousands And here we are again today. He, he did it again. He fell apart again. Now there's a split with the charismatics. They're all fighting over. I hate Todd Bentley. We love Todd Bentley. And the devil's laughing his guts up. He outsmarted everybody in the system. Every single one of them was fooled. Not one of those apostles and prophets saw that this guy needed to finish his deliverance but me right after the guy fell I called that ministry I said hey I talked to one of the ministers there who had been over here getting deliverance I said hey have Todd come in I'll be happy to help him we'll do it on the QT no problem oh no it's okay Mike no we don't need you we, he's got a a recovery team working with him well when I found out who the recovery team was Rick Joyner and the other prophetics who were also infected with <laughs> familiar spirits I knew hell was going to come back to breakfast I knew it was going to happen but I dropped the issue because they told me to get lost in so many words so I never brought it up again because it wasn't my place to bring it up I didn't have any authority over there I was just calling because I cared about the guy Anybody here mad at me right now? No. Hey, listen. None of this would have ever happened had the church done what they were supposed to do with the excited Todd Bentley when he was young. Okay? If you look at Todd Bentley now, he looks like a carnival barker. 
He's got a Moses beard out to here and tattoos all over his body when I saw him over in with Patricia King over in Tempe He didn't have one tattoo on his feet. He was clean-shaven Person he looked like a human being All that happened after the demons tricked him They led him into all kinds of weird false doctrines strange stuff orbs Ooh. There's an orb. There are no orbs. It's it's all a crock. It's all familiar spirit manifestations. They're not real miracle. I call them strange fire miracles. They're they're useless. A healing and a deliverance is a very useful thing to a person. You get healed of a, of a sickness or an illness. That's a that's a real blessing you can take to the bank. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Huh? An orb? Honey, listen. You need an orb like you need another rock in your head. <laughs> what are you going to do with an orb? You see, these demons, these familiar spirits are so smart. They give you pleasurable things, stuff that feels good. See? All these people that came to me all summer long were all good people. Most of them were good people. There was a couple of nuts in the group. But basically, they were all good people. They all had strange manifestations, weird stuff going on in their bodies. None of them knew they had it. None of them knew they were in there. I had one guy who was came to me with hoe demons. He have lust demons? No, I mean hoe like this. Ho! Every time the Holy Spirit would hit him, <laughs> he'd go ho ho, and he crunched like that, like that. I said, "What is that?" What are you doing? Oh, that's the spirit of God touching. I said, that's not the spirit of God. That's a familiar spirit. You've been tricked again. I don't believe that. He bolts out the door. <laughs> Screw Mike. <laughs> Six months later, he calls me. Mike, this is so-and-so. You were right. I'm infected. These are true stories, Robert. Guy calls me. Oh! <laughs> You see somebody hoeing in church, man. They need to be on a farm. <laughs> Brother Mike. What? I got, the, I got the anointing, man. I got an orb in my face. Oh, you got an orb in your face. Kneel down here. We got to get that thing out of there. You don't understand, Mike. No, I didn't understand before 2008. I understood in 2008. Okay, they don't fool me anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is one of the few ministries, this could be the only ministry that casts out kundalini demons. I don't know of any. I'm not saying they're not out there. I'm saying I don't know they're out there. But I don't know everything. As far as I know, we are the only ones that cast kundalini demons out of these church people and they're good people I know that for a fact It should have never happened to poor Todd Bentley. I do not hate that guy. I don't find him a disgusting piece of human garbage The guy was tricked He, he wanted to serve God he at that time he had a good heart but these these demons that were still in there kept manifesting see and he'd go for a while with no lust and poof, There it would there it would come up again, and then he'd get a gal on the internet then he'd talk his wife into something see these things manifest Say and he was being mentored by people who were spiritually ignorant They didn't understand Kundalini they didn't understand that he was still infected with demons and this went on for years. Years. Lakeland fell in 08. This is 2019. So that would be. Do the math. Always remember, Kundalini spirits are familiar spirits. Familiar spirits always team up with lust demons. When you find a Kundalini, you will always find a lust demon. Okay? Go back in the Old Testament. There they were. Idol worship. Lust demons. Idol worship. Sacrificial orgies. 
The devil always has lust and familiar spirits working together. See? Food, sex, money, power. There's always a lust, a pull for covetousness, sexual perversion. They're always together. Every time you find religious spirits, Hinduism, Buddhism, all of it, behind the scenes, there's always lust. Always there. You can bet your house on it. Ooh. That was tough. <clears throat> What do you think of Patricia Gay? Love her. What do you think about the, They're great people. They're deceived. They don't understand familiar spirits, how smart they are, how they hide in your body, they hide in your brain, and then they manifest later. They're tricksters. They're geniuses. They're smarter than you are. By far. Any comments or questions then? Or I'll just move on if there's none. I was going to say it's what accountability is about. What would you say, man? Here you go. I said that's the importance of accountability. Ruth. Ruth. Yes. Accountability. Well, she's right. There's accountability involved. and But Todd went through accountability, but he went with people who didn't understand what I just explained. Okay, so the demons are fine with accountability if it's ignorant accountability. See, had they known he had demons, and to someone like me or somebody who's been in this type of ministry, it was obvious he was infected. It wasn't to them. See, another thing that the devil uses is love. He gets love to excuse sins or excuse bad behavior. Well, I love you. We're to treat him with love. Yeah, love also includes discipline and training. That's part of love too. That part of love they don't get. Okay? The demons also trick the prophetics and the charismatics. They teach them to give each other titles. Titles are big. As soon as you see a church group with a bunch of titles, you better run out the door fast. Okay? Three weeks ago, I go to a service in Tempe. I took my daughter with me, my girl Tracy. She went with me. And in the service, loaded with wonderful people, Loving people, nice people. Oh, it was fantastic. Half the people in this service had a title. There were more prophets and apostles in that room. You could, <laughs> you could count. Hewlett Packard. One of them was a head apostle. See? Once you start spreading these terms around, then you got to break down the term. You an apostle? Are you the head apostle? <laughs> Well, listen, if you use a biblical definition for an apostle, to my knowledge, there are no apostles in the United States. I never saw one, if there were one. If you know one, let me know. I'm very anxious to hear, to meet the person. I will call them. Okay. If you have to tell yourself you're a prophet, you're not one. You didn't this thing even on anymore. I went too far didn't I now? I'm in trouble yeah. Okay, skip it <laughs> Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many because iniquity will abound and the love of many will wax cold Don't you see these familiar spirits always have lust demons working with them and the iniquity is always behind the scenes of the ministry It's there, but it's it's hidden for a while, but 
The devil always lets it stay hidden for a while. He keeps it quiet for a while. He helps the person until he's ready to expose it and cause embarrassment to Christ and Christianity. That's what Todd's being used for now. The false prophet and the Antichrist in the future tribulation are supported and brought to power by familiar spirits, witchcraft, the occult, all of it. Familiar spirits always destroy every revival that breaks out. Every one of them went down. The Welsh revival got wiped out in a year. The Azusa Street revival lasted about a year. That, that got wiped out. Toronto outpouring got infected. What happened in Toronto? That's where Todd Bentley came from. Here's what happened. A revival breaks out at the airport church there, and John R. No and his wife, really good people, they're pastoring this church. There's about two or 300 people in the church, and all of a sudden, boom, this thing hits. And Randy Clark's there. You ever met Randy Clark? Oh, he's a great guy. As nice a guy you ever meet. The guy's got a wonderful heart on him. <clears throat> he has no idea what I'm talking about right now. None. He has absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. If they're listening to me right now, they're mar noting me as an apostate. Right now, I'm an apostate. They don't believe anything I'm saying. Okay? Well, what happened at Toronto was the familiar spirits saw the thing break out, and then they rushed in, okay? And their job is to put a little leaven in to leaven the, the whole lump. So what you found at Toronto was this guy got healed by God. Uh, this guy's barking like a dog. This one got filled with the Holy Ghost legitimately. Uh, this one's howling like a wolf. This one's having seizures, roaming around the ground. This one, it was all mixed. Well, Arnaud, he's a great guy. They had no knowledge or experience of familiar spirits. Like I didn't in 2007. I was ignorant. I know what it's like to be ignorant. I remember my ignorance. They are ignorant. They don't understand how this system works. They don't understand how the infiltrators get in. I'm about to explain it to you. So you had all these weird things. So at the Toronto thing, you had all these people that loved it, and you had all these people that said, hey, there's something, this, is, this, this ain't working. There's something's wrong here. So you had this split. See? This side called that side haters and judgmental and legalistic. This side called that side deceived and servants of Satan. Everybody was wrong. They were all good people. The infiltrators had snuck in, tricking everybody. Just because you have spirits doesn't mean you're a bad person. Didn't get any amens on that one. Anyway, the rest of these revivals, Sooner Brownsville, I went there. I saw that in person. It was great. Uh, what happened to that? Same thing. The... Ministers start fighting, disputes broke out, thing fizzled. Yeah? Here's the mistake that prophetics and charismatics make that we need to learn tonight. Listen to me carefully. Teen challenge, please listen to me. Your anointing given to you by God is in your spirit, man, and it has nothing to do with your character. Your character and your integrity are in your conscience. Yes. Your conscience is separate from your spirit man. You have a spirit man in there, and you have a conscience. Your conscience is your moral guide. How do you fool people? It's so easy to do. Somebody's got a high anointing, but they've got a bunch of secret sins that they're hiding, like Todd. People think because you have a high anointing, you are a, in, a man of integrity and a man or woman of God. 
they think you've got high character because they're spiritually ignorant not knowing that your character has nothing to do with your anointing I can hear you in your mind some of you are slitting your wrists right now okay listen to me carefully your anointing is given to you by God it's located in your spirit man that is not your integrity it is not your character so after you receive a powerful anointing here you may have a strong character at this time okay. hello but five years later you still have your anointing but your character is now sunk down here okay happened to Benny Hinn when he started out in the ministry one testimony after another I've heard over the years he was the greatest guy he ever met loving friendly caring anointed everything he was pastoring a church in Florida the phony rot gut TV preachers got to him and the guy completely flipped what can be done about it nothing because the ignorant Christians think that your anointing has something to do with your character and it does not a. a. Allen died drunk in a hotel room in San Francisco in 1960. There wasn't a miracle that guy didn't see. He looked like he fell out of the book of Acts. Name a miracle. He, he saw it. He saw it. Every conceivable healing. This guy had an anointing off the hook what happened his character over a year over the period of years started to dip a bit are you listening to me the gifts and calling gods are out without repentance that means in the Greek God doesn't regret giving it to you if he gives you something he doesn't take it back okay but your character over the time you have that gift may deteriorate Depending upon your attitude, your influences, who you hang around, who you marry, etc., etc. So you've got a minister here with a high anointing who has a lot of character, but over a period of years gets a little scummy. That was for Bob. That was for Robert. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Your anointing has nothing to do with your character. Your integrity is in your conscience. Your anointing is not in your conscience. It's in your spirit, man. The Holy Ghost is in your spirit, man, trying to influence your conscience. But he will not control it. You have to yield it to him. The Holy Ghost will not force you to love God or serve God. You must yield. The devil will force you. He will push you and intimidate you to serve him. He will lie and cheat. He fights dirty. The Holy Ghost gently tells you, hey, little conviction here. Don't say that to her. Don't do that to him. Don't drink that. Don't smoke that. Don't put that there. Don't go here. Don't go in there. Don't go. It's a gentle little still smile. That's still a small voice talking to you. I love you. Don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself or somebody else. I'm talking like the Holy Ghost there. Yeah. Are you listening to me? What I'm telling you tonight is what all these ministers in the United States don't know. They don't understand. That's why people cover up for ministers Because they think wait a minute the, the anointing. No, no, that's their character. They're good. They're a good person They get tricked so the sin keeps going, but it's 
it keeps being hidden by the control group surrounding the person It stays that way until it breaks out the devil will eventually break it out and then he'll bring shame and humiliation and embarrassment on not not just on the minister, but on the ministry Okay, You, you don't understand. I, is, are you listening to me? <clears throat> Back in the 80s Jimmy swaggered had a high anointing for preaching uh, In my opinion higher than anyone I've ever seen this guy was the greatest preacher Possibly he looked like he preached out of the book of Acts through all these years Jimmy Swagger had lust demons that he kept beating them down through prayer and fasting and counseling and this and that. He kept these things at bay. Well, sooner, soon in, in, in 19, whatever it was, 80 something, he started to loosen up. Okay? In the Assembly of God religion, which I came out of, it's in it for years, they don't believe Christians can have demons. So Jimmy. Ignorantly spiritually ignorant didn't know he was infected He didn't know why he couldn't get rid of these urges If you don't get the demons out you'll never fully recover from anything Ever you'll get better At times, but you will never fully recover. They will always come back. Well, Jimmy didn't understand that and Jimmy had a buffer group around him that kept him protected and so on, but sooner or later, boom, it comes out. You need to repent now because sooner or later you're going to get exposed. You think you're cutting a fat hog and fooling everybody now? You may be. Hey, God's warning you. Sooner or later, the devil is going to drag you out in public and embarrass you through the end of time. Jimmy Swagger got, got, got caught going to a horse twice. Twice. Everybody forgave him the first time until he got caught the second time. Jimmy didn't understand that there was someone inside his body pushing him to do things he didn't want to do. The person doesn't want to do it. They know it's wrong. Their conscience told them it was wrong. But the demons don't quit. They don't get tired like people do. They just keep coming back, coming back, push you a little bit, push you a little bit, push, push, stop it, stop! Person gets frustrated. Person gets sick, person goes for help, person gets counseling. You can't counsel demons. They have to be removed. Jimmy, Jimmy, buddy, come see me. Jimmy Swagger, please come see me. I know what's wrong with you, partner. I love you. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? The anointing in the spirit man for preaching was off the hook. But that's not your character, that's not your integrity. The demons trick Christians. It's so subtle. Listen, why don't you go help somebody and bless them? Why don't you get involved in this ministry? Why don't you do this and that? The person does it. They feel better. The demons are telling them. I know this sounds like I'm on crack. The demons encourage them to be ministers. They want them to ministry. Why? So they can stay in. See, you're feeling better now. You helped those kids, right? You rescued those sex trafficker kids, right? Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, praise God. That's oh, glory to God. The demons are going, no problem. I'll just get the kids again later, and I get to stay in you. After I'm done with this teaching, I'm sneaking out <laughs> and I'll be gone for a month or so. So, 
I know what you're thinking We'll get him in his car You're anointing prophetic ministers listen to me Bill Johnson listen to me your anointing is not your character bill Familiar spirits they hide they're smart They trick everybody hello Hello They don't understand these things spirits can go dormant You have to finish your deliverance once you start it. Okay Here's why deliverance is so dangerous Once you start getting these demons out the demons that are left in after those have been cast out are now on the warpath Now that you know they're there they handle you differently they counterattack. They use your family and your friends to kick the living stuffing out of you. They start ripping into your finances. They st start attacking your kids. Oh, you want to get the demons out, do you? Okay, we're going to fight back. So what they do is they, they beat the Christian down, and the Christian gets scared, worried, exhausted, and stops. Worst thing you can do. You know why? Once you start it, you cannot go back. Because they know, now know, you know they're in there. They'll even try to kill you. I've seen it. I have a list of dead people that I've worked with over the years. You can ask Kelly. She has a list. Dead people. Dead people. No, they didn't listen. Okay? Eh? That's why Paul called it a war. People die. Okay? If you don't have, if you have a weak conscience, you will have integrity issues, but you will still be an anointed man or woman of God. You will eventually get involved in scandals, even if you are a great man of God. There's four of them. Saul was prophesying with the prophets, died on the battlefield, committing suicide, and went to hell. King David slew Goliath. Okay? When he slew Goliath, he had a high anointing, but he had integrity issues. They manifested when Bathsheba showed up. Oh, you insulted King David. I did not. I love King David. He's helping all of us right now. God used him to teach us because he loves us. Don't you see? Solomon, smartest man in the world, highly anointed man in the world, most intelligent human ever, richest man ever. What about what happened to him? He had a monstrous anointing, but he had integrity issues that caught up with him, costing his eternity. The dude married 600 women. Can you even imagine marrying two women? You got to be kidding. 600 women, you're doomed. I'm married to one woman. I'm struggling to meet her needs. Struggling. Every day. Mike. So I hear Mike. Oh yeah. I'm in for activity. <laughs> one woman. Six hundred women? Oh, you're dead. You're dead in one. That's all demons. Is anybody not understanding this? Raise your hand. You don't understand what I'm saying. Anybody here think I'm making stuff up or I'm just being a fool or something? Trying to hurt people. I'm not trying to I'm trying to help you. You're here. He was a great prophet. He got all kinds of words from God. Ended up, ended up, Joshua killed the guy. Went over to the dark side. Balaam. Started out as a great man of God. Prophesying about Israel and everything. <laughs> your anointing is not your character. They're separate. Who had a hand up on that? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I had a, a experience.
things like that about two years ago. We went to a place up on uh, North Cape Creek, and uh, it uh, thank you. It's called God's Living Room, and we went in there, and I didn't know any better. And this guy came over from California. What was it? It doesn't matter his name, but and uh, we all thought, yeah, the Holy Spirit's here, and he imparted something on us and we were all receiving it and he did that exact same thing he'd go he was preaching he'd go ah, ah, ah. he'd go he called a spiritual Tourette he'd be talking he'd go ah, ah, you know really loud and and I caught a a kundalini spirit and he was there and I was I was coiled up like a spring bouncing on one foot and I had two bad hips and uh I thought it was the Holy Spirit I'd never experienced that song I was amazed it was incredible and um, so that, that stuff's real. Yeah, it's our. I hope I got rid of that too. And I read it like all the stuff you're saying. I can relate to it all. I'm still going through a lot of that stuff from that stuff. And when you're talking about like that's a trip because you talk about the spirit and losing you. And I get prayed from. Remember when I got prayed and remember did I remember I tell you Mike? I said there was traveling in me. It's weird. The spirit. These things are moving you too. I can feel it moving in my eye and stuff, and it'll travel my body. So it was weird. I get prayed up top, and that thing go down to my feet. I can feel it, you know, and it, my, my feet would get like Frankenstein. I feel they feel like flat feet. I was like, what's going on? Those things will take off in your body, and try, like he's saying, like Mike, you're saying, it will hide. They'll try to find a place where they can get away from it for the time being, and then after they get through, get praying, they want to come back up in you. And they, they travel in your body, your mind, and stuff. They attack you to all kinds of things. Maybe you believe false beliefs. So you believe it after a while. Again, they'll play in your mind like a recording in your head. And then try to make you believe it after a while. You start to think it. But I battled it all the time. And I've been going through the black. And like, if you run like that, I went through it. And then that was nice. This stuff, this is stuff that messes me hard. And I've been running and stuff. and just like, wow, trying to shake it off. These are times I had to go have a drink. I always try to keep myself from not. I go out and have to just to get over it, to get off that, bust that off, you know, and go away with it. It's a, it's a trip, though, man. But as I'm talking about it, I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, he, what you're saying. He's not finished with his deliverance yet. Okay? So, but he started it, but he's going to eventually finish it. These demons are brilliant, and they transfer in the services so quickly and easily. They have what they call a fire tunnel. And everybody stands like on this side and that side and then everybody goes down through and everybody puts their hands in him fire on him and Fire tunnel and then they impart Things into the person well these spirits transfer in during those fire tunnels I've had dozens of people come for help that have been through a fire tunnel yeah. Exactly they put their hands on them and they you don't know who that guy is they could have been on porn two days ago How do you know? They speak things to you. <clears throat> On both sides of you. Yeah. He's been through one. Yeah, I've been there a yeah. Oh, a couple of them. <laughs> you see, yeah. that's not good. <laughs> you, you can tell that's not good. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Stevie. If you're truly filled by the Holy Ghost, though, you don't fall for that. Oh, now that see that's not true. Now you're the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in your spirit, man. Your spirit, your Holy Ghost in your spirit, man. See, deception is in your mind, your brain. If you think you can't be deceived, you already are. Yeah, it's it's in your mind. See? Glory cloud. Yeah, do not go into a glory cloud. Okay, that's. And everybody's dancing around and laughing and so on. That's not the glory of God. That's the Shekinah glory. That's not in the Bible. That Hebrew word is not in the Bible. The Hebrew word for glory is kabod. And every time it manifested in the Bible, people collapsed in brokenness in the presence of God. In the glory cloud at the prophetic meetings, oh, it comes in, It's it looks like, Leaves coming in or something and everybody's laughing and giggling and doing cartwheels. No, that's it's all Familiar spirits making you feel good. They want you to feel good It gives you a good feeling yeah. 
Todd Bentley got filled with the Holy Ghost when he first got saved. After he got delivered, got filled with the Spirit. Boom. Never finished his deliverance. Bang. Led into total deception. That's why you've got to renew your mind. The Bible requires you to renew your mind. Getting filled with the Spirit does not suddenly click. Renew your mind. Doesn't happen. You have to renew your mind. That's a part of your free will, which is in your mind and your conscience. You don't automatically become a Bible scholar after you got saved. You grow in grace. You walk by faith. See? You have to renew your mind. Or you'll be deceived. Your conscience has your integrity and your character. Here it is. Your conscience has your integrity. Your spirit man has the Holy Ghost and the anointing. They are different. Your soul contains your emotions. Right here. Your body is your flesh. You are to renew your mind. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Renew your conscience. Control your emotions. And control your body. If you do not receive the Holy Spirit. And you do not renew your mind. You cannot control your body. You will get into lust and sin. And overeat. And whatever it is you do with your body. That you shouldn't be doing with your body. Hello. These are the ABCs of Christianity tonight. And believe it or not, most people don't know them. This material is shocking to some people. The Spirit speaks expressly. Now let me switch subjects here. Let's say, for example, oh no, Saturday, let's say. Next Saturday, you're sitting at home. Oh, you turn on the news. Click. And they're covering a Gay rights parade. You know, you're just watching it. And you're sitting there watching it and you go, Golly, my God, look at that. That looks like Brother Mike. <laughs> He's wearing a tutu with a rainbow flag and a pink Christmas bonnet. Look at him, honey, come here, look at him. Brother Mike is in the gay rights parade. What should you do? Blow it off. It's got nothing to do with you. Todd Bentley has nothing to do with you. This is between you and God. If this person fails, you go on with God. You are not here worshiping Brother Mike. If I end up in a tutu downtown somewhere, just oh poor guy. Well, that's that happens. I'm going with Jesus Amen. What's happening right now Todd Bentley is crushing people all over the country. They're broken-hearted. They're sick Patricia King is sick Right now over what he's done. No. Hey, listen This between you and God not you and me You're not worshiping these people. I am not your Savior. This pastor is not you are a follower of the Son of God, not a human being. So when these people fail, you pray for them and turn them over to God. And hey, you go on with God. Hmm? Call Patricia King. What do you want me to call her? Well, see how she is. I saw her on video. She's doing great. Listen, if somebody fails, that's got nothing to do with you. Let it go. Don't get in a huffy over it. <clears throat> My God, I can't believe it. You know people backslide over ministers who fail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They backslide. They get mad at God. Mm -hmm. It's a trick. That's why the devil has them backslide in public. He loves it. Because he points to them and goes, hey, there's no Jesus. Look, at that guy was serving Jesus. and He's a fraud. You're a fraud. You serve Jesus. Why don't you get discouraged and despondent over his failure? It's a trick. Now the probability of me being in a parade downtown is low because I don't like pink. Okay? Now that now listen, God is telling you up front. 
that this Todd Bentley stuff, Jimmy Swagger, and all these other ministers is going to increase. It started in the pre tribulation, it's going to increase in the tribulation, but it's already started. Here's God speaking to you the latter times, that's the pre tribulation. They will listen to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They will speak lies and hypocrisy. We're seeing it happen right now, right in front of our eyes. They will have their consciences seared with a hot iron. What does that mean? Cauteriazzo means to something gets really hard. It's our English word to cauterize. If your conscience is hard, it doesn't pick stuff up anymore. You're doing some sin. It used to bother you. It no longer bothers you. See? When Todd Bentley texts a girl and says, Hey, uh, you know, I like your this, Sonia. I like that. Can, can, can you come over? In the beginning when he did that, his conscience said to him, Todd, don't do that. That's not... <coughs> you're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. But after he did it 50 times, now there's no sense of conviction. That's a seared conscience. Okay, if you yell at people the first few times you do it, you have a little conviction. Oh man, I yelled. I shouldn't have done that. After you yelled 500 times, now it no longer bothers you. You're just yelling now. That's what's going to happen. God's telling you that in the latter times, pre-tribulation. This is going to happen. So when it happens, you're not surprised because you're a follower of God's word. And now you know how it works. The Holy Spirit is in your spirit, man. The familiar spirits tricking all these prophetics and charismatics are hiding in the brain. Both the Holy Spirit and the familiar spirits are trying to influence your mind. I saw a guy on YouTube with a demonic gift of knowledge. He would look at a person and go, oh, yeah, your uh, son died a few years ago. You've been in a bad depression. Uh, you got sick about this. And, that. and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Ghost gift of knowledge is different from a demonic gift of knowledge. They both reveal facts about a person, but the Holy Ghost gift of knowledge Provides a solution The other one is picking up facts amazing people Like a psychic Knowing this verse that there's come the last days pre-tribulation we're in the last days Scoffers walking after their own lusts people making fun of Christianity. They hate Jesus. They're Everything's a joke now. You're not upset about it because you were told it was coming. Jude 1, murmurers will come, complainers walking after their own lusts, familiar spirits. Always use lust spirits. Their mouths will speak great swelling of words. They will have men's persons in admiration because of Ophelia. What's that mean? It's called hero worship. <coughs> They plaster these anointed ministers on TV. Boom! They're funny. They're intelligent. They're great. They're teachings. They're this. They're that. Oh, wow. And people are looking at them like going, wow, that's really great. That's the point of the demonic inspiration to get you to be amazed at them and so they can take advantage of you. Duh. You're not going to give somebody or support somebody whom you find disgusting. Brother Mike's IQ is huge. <laughs> the demons simply build these people up. They make them amazing. You know, you sit there and listen to Mike Mardock. He comes up with one cute phrase after the other. You can't lose with the stuff I use. Oh, wow, that's deep. That's spiritual. Wow. Ooh. Then he wants you to send in your life savings. Planning is it's all a crock. Don't you see it? Can't you get it? It's all out there. And 
You should not be upset or angry or fly into a rage. God warned you it was coming. You've been told. Let no man deceive you by any means. There's going to come a what? An apostasia. What is that? The great apostasy is coming. In America, for example, people are falling away from Christianity like you can't believe. Nobody here is surprised. Why? Because God already told you it's going to happen. It's happening during the pre-tribulation. It's going to happen in the tribulation and ramp up like that. And the Holy Spirit gave you this information so you would not be surprised. So the man of sin can be revealed. The son of Apollia means destruction or ruination. It's already happening. Just in the last couple of months, these famous ministers have crashed in scandals or publicly renounced their faith. It just happened. Okay? The great apostasy will occur in the tribulation at this level, but it's already occurring now in the pre tribulation. It's just starting to ramp up. So when you see these people turning their backs on God, who everybody thought, wow, they had them, they're so, this person is so incredible. He, he writes all these incredible songs for Hillsong. That's amazing. Wow. The devil's getting you to admire people and not Christ so that when they fall, you fall with them. It's all a trick. These mega church pastors all have crashed in the last few months. You're not surprised. You're not upset. You're not blowing your stack. Why? You were warned by God. You were told that it was going to happen. You've already got this knowledge, and it's not catching you off guard. You know it's coming. There were false prophets among the people. There will be false teachers among you. They will bring in Apollia, destructive heresies. Some of them will even deny the Lord. Here they are. Over the last five years, these crazy teachings have flooded through Christianity. They just pick verses out of context and they build a doctrine around them. And these Christians that come to the seminars and the meetings are so weak in the word that they're led astray in seconds. They, they think it's legitimate. Why? Because the person sharing it is someone they admire. See? That is not that is not a criteria to believe someone. See? Now I can tell there's massive admiration for me here. I mean, it just it's oozing out of the people. But that admiration is not why you should listen to what I'm saying. When I tell you something, you should double check it with the word. You don't accept it because I said it was true. That's unchristian. But a superstar Christian, oh, they blab something out. Oh, it must be right. They said it. That's when you're almost sure it's wrong. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, God. There's some more crazy doctrines. All this stuff's wax, wax city. Courts of heaven. Do you ever hear of that one? Oh, that one went big. That one went big. I sold a lot of DVDs and CDs on that one. Wish I could have figured it out. But anyway, you know what? The courts of heaven. Did you read the scriptures in the courts of heaven? Did you ever read the scriptures in that doctrine? It's unbelievable. They just pulled them right. They don't say anything about the courts of you going to the courts of heaven. Nothing. Not one scripture. You know where the real courts of heaven are? Right here on your knees. You want to go to the courts of heaven? You can get down right here on your knees. Some people had the blessing in life of having a praying grandmother. Some people, not many, but some people had it. And they'd go to her before any TV preacher they ever, they ever saw on TV. I got to get to grandma because grandma knows how to get her hands on the horns of the altar. She knows how to get down on her knees. She knows how to pray. Bible 
that's the courts of heaven not that crap you bought on the DVD They just manufacture it. It's all made up Why you got to keep coming up with something new I told you nobody's gonna buy something old Would you like that my new CD uh, DVD I've got a new set coming out. Yeah, it's on it's on changing your behavior and repenting and renewing your mind and and, and stop yelling at your family. <laughs> well, those will sell. Those will be flying off the rack, won't they? Are you crazy? There's no way those are going to sell. I'll have all of them there in six months. Courts of heaven. Ooh. I mean, I can go up to the courts of heaven. <laughs> Where's the DVD? <laughs> Stupid. Come on, folks. Oh, here's a goodie. You ever heard of this one? Total and complete spiritual insanity. The Christians are going to take over the planet. <laughs> Does it look like we're taking over America to you? Have you seen the Democrats and the Republicans? Have you been watching the news? Yeah, it's all going Jesus' way. Stupid Many shall follow their what a destructive ways and Then the way of truth will be evil spoken of that's exactly what happened to poor Todd Bentley Got the devil used him to rake Christianity over the coals again It's gonna happen on the next scandal and the next one But it's not gonna bother you because you were told ahead of time what's gonna happen through covetous they shall with feigned words Plastos, where we get our English word plastic. Yes. Have you ever seen uh, an injection mold? Yes. You know, uh, I'm not an expert on them, but these these uh, engineers cut out in these molds like an ashtray <coughs> or something, and then uh, the mold is shut, and then it's got this. I don't know tube or something and then this plastic that's melted squirts into the thing and then it's uh, I don't really know what I'm talking about it hardens and then the thing plops open there you got an ashtray Whatever that process is called. I don't even know okay, I don't know. What are they called? Injection molding the forms. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what these these uh, crooks on TV are They they come to you and say well, what do you like? Oh, okay. There you go. What do you like? Oh, there you go. There's a. What are you? What are you looking for? That's. That's what he's saying. It's all fabricated. It's all molded to deceive each in person individually. They do what? Empor. Oh my. That's what. An emporium, where we get our English word emporium. It's a traveling salesman going from one spot to the other, next spot selling crap. Then they go to the next and sell crap. Then they sell some more crap. That's what these TV preachers are. They get on there and they sell crap to people. Then they go to the next place and sell some more crap. Then they try to find somebody who hadn't heard the crap pitch. So then they go get a different crap. You making that stuff up? No, I'm reading it it's right here. Through covetousness, the desire to gain wealth and material things and money, they will use plastic words to trick you. And they will be like traveling salesmen. They will go from here to there, making a fool out of you with false doctrines and courts of heaven. And, oh, the seven mountains. I'm going to get two of the mountains. False hopes, lies, deceptions. It's all crazy. But it's not crazy to you because you were warned it was going to happen. They have eyes full of adultery. They cannot cease from sin. Here it is. Here's poor Todd Bentley. Akatoposos is what an addiction You can't stop doing it You have a sex addiction you have a rage problem You can't stop It's an addiction You've done it so many times now the demons are, have taken over they control you now Todd can't stop it this thing comes up and he can't stop it. It's too much for him because they never saw he was still infected. They never got him to get rid of the rest of the demons. 
they will beguile unstable souls. What's that? Deliazo. They will trick them with delusions. They've exercised their heart with covetous practices. They have cursed children who have forsaken the right way and gone astray. Wow. The millennials in Generation X. Oh my gosh. No consciences on these kids anymore. They will follow Balaam. Greed. Their judgment is coming. Hey, it doesn't bother you anymore. No matter what somebody does, you're not going to be the least bit shaken. Not the least bit shaken. You, hey, you, if you if I get caught in a tutu somewhere, Robert will just come up here and fill in and <laughs> drop it. Just go on with God. Just forget it. Get rid of me. Drop it. Bag it. You're not serving Mike. Just a regular person. You're serving the Lord. If somebody fails, it's got nothing to do with the Lord. What causes Christians to be deceived? False apostles. Deceitful workers. That meeting I went to three weeks ago, the guest speaker there mentioned that the main apostle, the head apostle, who was in the service, had the same anointing as Apostle Paul. As soon as he said that, I couldn't take anymore. I leaned over to my girl, Tracy, and said, honey, we need, we need to go. We got to go. You know, I can't take it anymore. We bolted out the door. Okay? And uh, nobody else caught that but me. I was the only, we were the only people that left. Everybody else said, oh, yeah, yeah. Apostle. Yeah, I can see him annoying you, Paul. That's right. Jeez. I just got promoted to prophet. Well, you're not going to criticize your apostle. If you just got a pro a promoted prophet, are you? Oh, I don't think so. I don't want to lose my apostleship by the apostle. Okay, don't fall for this stuff. Okay? Grandma with the anointing, praying for the sick, they all got healed. She was a servant. She was a servant of Christ. God could trust her with the anointing. These fake apostles and prophets running around in the Prophetic and charismatic movements. These people can't be trusted with the real anointing. They don't have it. It's kundalini Mike you're being kind of hard on people I'll tell you somebody who's hard on them is Satan when he transforms himself into an angel of light He will be hard on you He will be really hard on you. Let me give you another little teeny bit of insight on these kundalini demons they love using spirits of infirmity and these prophetic people in particular they like cancer a lot of them have come down with cancer they make you sick they give them weird illnesses strange things that can't be healed check it out yourself it's the angel of light tricking people he tricks these people into becoming ministers of righteousness. That's Todd Bentley, the poor guy. He's on Facebook telling everybody, oh, no, that's none of that stuff's true. That all happened way in the past. See, it's the angel of light tricking people. Tricking them. Their end will be according to their works. Absolutely. The law of sowing and reaping applies to every person, sinner or saint. You will... So in the sin you will crash. It doesn't matter whether you're saved or not yes. Beloved seeing that you know these things before Right, we're discussing these things before Beware lest you also Are led astray With the error of the wicked plane is a delusion What's he saying here? born-again spirit-filled Christians if they do not know the word can be deceived yes. right they can be tricked when's the devil get you 
when he's convinced you that you really know something Man, you're you're smart see you're not like Fredo you're brilliant as soon as you buy that you're already bagged you will fall from your own steadfastness second Corinthians the Corinthian church had a bunch of people come in and they started trashing brother Paul Wait a minute. He's a we're as much an apostle as he is. I was just in a meeting three weeks ago where they had a bunch of apostles there. They thought they were the apostles like Paul. I, I was reading this in the 21st century. He said, "I became a fool in kalkakomai means boasting, but you forced me to boast." He said, "Why? Because they were criticizing him, so he had to defend himself." He said, "I come behind and no." Gift of any apostle Peter John the whole rack of them He said truly the signs of an apostle Were wrought among you now listen Simeon is a Greek word for miracles. I Need your attention right now You need to stand up and stretch Okay What is an apostle I just went to a meeting three weeks ago with had a rack of apostles there, but were they apostles? How do I know what apostle is? I go to God's word as usual. Correct? The signs of and the miracles, Simeon, of an apostle you saw in me, he says. What are those four signs? One, Upamane, get patient endurance. Okay. A person who claims to be an apostle who is impatient. Has no time for people red flag He's not an apostle number two Simeon miracles is this person performing Holy Ghost miracles. I'm not talking about an angel feather or an orb Okay, those are those are familiar spirit miracles. I mean real miracles Terrors wonders is that person performing Shocking supernatural activities, a wonder, a terrace. Do they perform dunamis, supernatural deeds? If that is not the case, then those people have only given themselves a name of an apostle. They are fake. There's your litmus test. That's why I said earlier, I'm not aware of any apostles in the United States. There may be there. I'm just not aware of them. I don't know everything. All right, let's wrap up the seminar. In Luke chapter 21, the disciples came to Jesus and they said to him, what are the signs that are going to happen before the parousia, the second coming? Remember that? Okay. And he answers it. This way he goes down this list of things that are going to happen before he returns okay and here's here's the list I, I just summed it up for uh, to save some time uh, sorry about that your family will betray you he said there will false Christ will arise there will be wars and commotions all over the place nations shall rise against nation he said there will be earthquakes, famines, and pestilences. Okay? By the way, all this stuff is happening now in the pre-tribulation, but it ramps up in the tribulation. But it's starting here at a lower level. It's already happening. There will be persecution and hatred of Christians. Okay? It's not happening now, but it's starting to happen. It's starting, and it ramps up in the tribulation. Jerusalem will be surrounded by the armies of the other nations China Russia all those other the Arabs They'll all be surrounding the City of Jerusalem. They will invade Israel. There will be a great evacuation of Jews out of the nation of Israel Why America is not there to help her anymore? Something happens to us 
We're not there anymore We either turned against them or something else happened to us Jerusalem will be trodden down by Gentiles Pateo is the Greek word that means Stomp if there was a cockroach there that would be Pateo That's what Jesus said Stomp them down. There'll be signs in the Sun and the moon and the stars men's hearts will fail themselves for fear and The powers of heaven shall be shaken Anybody remember reading this chapter? Huh? Okay, then he says something Shocking here it is. What does God want you to do tonight? Okay Well, the first thing was Don't get upset or take offenses or get angry or hate these people that fall or fail or turn their back on God Okay, don't do that. That's not your job You know Todd Bentley did something bad and he embarrassed us again I do not hate Todd Bentley and if the dude called me tomorrow I'd be down here Letting him in my office doing everything I could to help him. Okay. Do I agree agree with anything they did? I do not I Do not that doesn't matter. Hey See love covers a multitude of sins You are not to take offenses or get mad at people or find them disgusting or They ought to be shot or no, that's all a demonic response. Okay That's not what God wants you to do. That's the first thing I was teaching tonight What's the second thing what does God want you to do Jesus told you in chapter 21? Jesus switches from the tribulation to the rapture Check it out Verse 34 he's talking about the rapture and he says take heed to yourselves Christians lest at any time your hearts be Barnuo burdened down with what Surfeiting Well, brother Mike, I don't Charlie don't sure sir. I don't surf. No, that's not surfing in the ocean that's Kripale. It means to have a hangover from some kind of drugs. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but during the tribulation, drugs will be running rampant, but it's already started. Particularly here in America, they're legalizing pot. It's spreading all over the United States. It helps a small percent of people with pain, and you know, that's good. The problem with pot is that it lets spirits into your brain, they just float right in. Any long-term pot user is in serious demonic trouble. I've had terrible results trying to get long-term potheads delivered because their minds are like gone. They get right into your brain, smoking pot. Drunkenness. And then it said, Jesus said, and the cares of this life. Merimna is a Greek word for anxieties. Biotikos is a Greek word for stuff you gotta do in life. Like what? Jobs, soccer practice, vacations, his trips to Disneyland, taking taking your kids to the doctor, this all the stuff you do in life that you have anxiety about can do what? Let's see So that day come upon you unawares Afnitos Unexpectedly what day what day well if it's the second coming that's not unexpected There's a series of things pointing to the second coming There's nothing pointing to the rapture as a snare a pagis is a trap you fall in that you didn't see coming. What's he talking about there? The second coming? No, you can see the second coming. Here are the signs of the second coming. One, two, three, four. He just went through them all. This is another event. 
This is a vent, an event that you can miss. He's talking to Christians. Watch and pray always that you may be accounted Tioxiao deserving to do what? Escape. Escape what? The second coming? No, no one can escape that. It's going to happen no matter what what you do or what, you, what anybody does. The rapture. He listed all these things in Luke. I listen them for you. Now Jesus said, would you like to escape all those things? Would you like to escape them? Okay. He said, you better be ready to go. Deserving to go in the rapture. So that all these things, and I already listed them. There were What were the 21 of them? 20 of them? So that all these things shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. What's he saying there? Something shocking, friend. Christians can miss the rapture because of the anxieties of this life. Because they are taking medications and alcohol and drugs and God only knows what. And they don't. They don't see it coming. They get caught. Let's pray. Lord, uh, I taught something that I'm never going to teach again tonight. And uh, if I offended some people on YouTube, I apologize for that. I was trying to uh, bring some other truths out that were helpful. wasn't trying to hurt anybody. If I did hurt somebody, I apologize for it. But Father, there's some people here tonight that they're not ready to go in the rapture. They have anxieties. They have fears. They have drugs. They have alcohol. They've got medications. They've got worries about doing this and doing that and going here and going there. And the rapture can come at any time. The rapture can come at any time and some Christians are going to miss the rapture and have to go through the tribulation because Jesus said if you want to escape all these things and be deserving you've got to change your life and get rid of your sin and become an overcoming born-again Christian I want, hope Todd Bentley calls me. I hope he comes here for deliverance. But if he doesn't, he's going to miss the rapture. Why? Whoa. He was not an overcomer. He never finished his deliverance. And he kept yielding to sin. And tonight, you're not going to miss the rapture because you are going to change. You're going to repent. You're going to change your life. You're going to change your life right now. You're not going to go get a CD about how to go to the courts of heaven. Not tonight. You're going to find a spot on your knees, a spot where your heart is broken and your arrogance and your pride has been destroyed. And you're going to turn your heart over to the Lord tonight because you are not going to get deceived by these familiar spirits. You are not going to be overcome by the anxieties of this life. You are not going to be overcome by alcohol or drugs or medications or pot or anything else. You're going to be ready to go and be counted deserving to escape all these things that shall come upon the face of the earth. God wants you to escape. God has not appointed you to wrath. He's appointed you to be delivered and to be saved. You are a very loved person. Todd Bentley is a very loved person. All of the things that he's done and the embarrassment that he's caused did not 
shatter the love of God for his life and if he repents and gets out of ministry and comes back to God with a broken heart the Spirit of the Lord will take him back 100% and if God will take Todd Bentley back he'll he'll take you in a heartbeat dear Jesus I have been worried and anxious about many things in my life. I've been like Martha in a way. Carnal things have gotten my way, my love for you, my spiritual development, my spiritual growth. And I need to change tonight. I need to repent. Todd Bentley has demons and he doesn't know it and you know what I still got some spirits left I never finished my deliverance and I've got symptoms of having spirits I'm angry I'm short-tempered I'm impatient I raise my voice at people I get frustrated I don't exhibit the fruit of the spirit the love and the joy and the peace of the Holy Ghost. It's escaped me. And I know why. The things of this world, the cares of this life, the lusts of other things have gotten the way of my soul. And I am not going to miss the rapture. I'm not going to end up deceived by familiar spirits. I'm not going to get tricked by false doctrines. I'm going to change I'm going to repent. I'm going to do what's right because I love you. Not because Brother Mike's a legalist and he nitpicks everybody's sin. That's not a that's not what it is. It's not legalism, it's love. You change and you repent because you love him and because he loves you and you don't want to hurt him anymore. By putting other things ahead of God you hurt his feelings because he has so many things he wants to give you you're going to change now you're going to be deserving of going when the rapture hits because that day and that hour no man knows nobody knows when it's going to hit And if you're left behind, you've got to go through God only knows what to make it. And if you can't live a Christian life in America where there's no persecution, how in the world are you going to survive the tribulation when there's real persecution and hatred of your faith in Christ? It's not going to happen. You're going to take the mark of the beast. If you can't live without sin in your life now, there's no way you're going to fend off somebody who's forcing you to take the mark of the beast so you can eat. It's not going to happen. What needs to be done? You repent tonight. You get your anointing tonight. And you change your character tonight. And you become a very dangerous person to the devil. You become a spiritual warrior. He can't deceive. A person with the anointing and integrity is unstoppable by Satan. If you have a high anointing and no integrity, he will eventually bring you down. All right, just raise your hand now if you need prayer. You've got integrity issues that you need to get rid of. And you're going to get rid of them right now. There's there's one two good next one. There's one you got integrity issues You have a nice anointing. You've got good knowledge of the Bible. You've been in church for years You've heard a thousand sermons. You know a lot about Christ and Christianity. Your knowledge is solid Okay, that's in your mind but Your life is ruined because you've got integrity issues that's how the devil got Todd Bentley. And that's how he's got you. You're going to repent of it. All right. 
Now come down here and see me if you raised your hand just come down here and stand right here and face me right here You want to be deserving deserving to go in the rapture Okay, remember that Greek word doesn't mean perfect nobody's perfect deserving to go deserving to go That's somebody who's repented That's somebody who's changed you come right down here. The ministry team will come down here real quickly. Help me real quick. Stand right here and face me. Thank you, Jesus. Integrity issues. They will destroy you. And Todd Bentley is the poster child of being destroyed by integrity issues. Okay, I'm not running him down. I'm not trashing the guy. I'm using him as a teaching example. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not running him down. I'm not attacking him. I'm not. Okay? But it came out in the news this week, and I thought, well, I'll take advantage of it. I'll use that as a teaching tool. That's all I'm doing. I'm not running Todd Bentley down. I mean, if the guy comes here tomorrow, I'm all in. I'll do everything I can to help him. Wouldn't you? Of course you would. You, you, you love. Just because somebody fails doesn't mean you don't love. Right? Absolutely. You got integrity issues. That's the killer. That's the killer. That will keep you from missing the rapture. That's what he said. I just read it to you. Anxieties and fears of crap in your life that's overcome your trust and faith and service to God. Right? Other things crept in. Sucked up your time, your energy, your emotions, your mind. Too busy, too, way too busy on all kinds of things. Except what? Integrity issues. That draws the Holy Ghost in. That's a person he can be comfortable with. Somebody who doesn't have integrity issues. Your anointing is not your integrity. Your intelligence is not your integrity. Those are different. You can quote the Bible by the yard and have no integrity. In fact, that's common, isn't it? A bunch of people know the Bible backwards and forwards. They got bad integrity issues. And the demons, they don't care about you quoting the Bible. They see the integrity issues. That's what they go for. They see it. They go after it. Once that's removed, you're going to go after them. Once it's removed, you'll go after them. You'll get him. You'll pay him back for what he's done to you and your family. You'll go after him for what he's done to your kids. He stole your kids. They're all serving demons now. Integrity issues. They're very important to God. Your intelligence and your abilities, your skills, those don't impress the Holy Ghost. He's got those in abundance. You got character and integrity? That draws him in. That draws him in. Keen challenge. That draws him in. And you can pray right now and repent of it. Will you do it? Go ahead. Close your eyes now. Dear Jesus, my God, I'm so sorry. That scripture Brother Mike just read, I can't believe it. I never read it like that before. I could miss the rapture because of integrity issues. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. I thought if you were born again, you automatically went in the rapture. Well, he was talking to Christians. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I got integrity issues. Drugs, alcohol, cursing and swearing, hating other people, unforgiveness and bitterness, arrogance and pride. Oh my God. It's stuck in my soul. It's stuck in my soul. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Holy Spirit, let me go now. Release me from this bondage of Satan. I renounce Satan and all of his work. I renounce wickedness and evil. 
I renounce it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I am not going to be drawn and quartered in public like poor Todd Bentley was. It's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to me in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn and change now. I'm going to turn and change now. I started my deliverance and then I quit. I started my deliverance and that was the worst decision I've ever made. I'm going to restart it right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. I'm going to restart it. I repent of self-hatred, low self-esteem. I repent of always having to be right. I repent of thinking my mind, my knowledge, my my attitude was enough to get to heaven. It isn't. It's in, It's my character. It's my integrity. Sweet Jesus, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to forgive me right now. Forgive me, Lord. God forgive me, O oh Lord. I have to finish my deliverance, Lord. I have to finish my deliverance. I have to finish it now. I can't keep these spirits in my body anymore. I have to finish my deliverance tonight. Tonight I finish my deliverance in the name of Jesus. The integrity issues come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Integrity and character. I command you to come out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Go in Jesus' money. Integrity issues. Go in Jesus' money. Come out. Come out. Flawed character. I command it. Come out in Jesus' money. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there. You mind control. Drugs. I curse you in Jesus' name. Drugs. I curse you in Jesus' name. Out of Get out of my head, Dad! I command you to go. Get out of my brain, mind control. Get out of there! I command you to go right now. Get out, every ugly man. Get out of me, all of them, all the rotten men, liars, users. Get out! There it is. Here he comes. There he comes. Come on out. Get out of my head now! I curse you, Satan. Come out now! Get out of my head! Get out of my mind! I command you to go. Loose me now in Jesus' holy name. Now, come out. Now, I said. Get out of there. Get out of my body right now. All of them. Every one of them. I command my childhood to come out now. Go. Get out of my head. Come out of my head, I said. Get out of there. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Go now in Jesus' mighty name. Now. Jesus' name. Drugs. I curse you. Come out. I curse you. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Prophetic demons, come out from their spirits. Come out. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. You get out of there, witchcraft. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on out. Get out of body. Keep coughing. Go. Come out now. Go. Come out now. Go. Get out of that body. Keep coughing. Come on. Come out of there quickly. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Hold that. Hold that. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come out. Hold that. Come on out. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Hurry. Poison. Come out. Poison. Poison from drugs. Come out. Poison from drugs. Come out. Get out of my body right now, you filthy spirit. Every ugly man that ever touched my body, every second I committed adultery and fornication, get out of my body right now. Come on out right now. Here it comes. Keep coughing. Come on out quickly. There he comes. He's coming out right now. Go. Come out now quickly. Come out now quickly. Come out. Come out of her vagina. Come out of her stomach right now. Come out of her breast. Out. Kundalini spirits. Church demons. You get out of my body right now. Come out right now. Say it. You get out of my body. You get out of my mind right this second. Get out of my head. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out of my body. Say it. You get out of my head right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out right now. Fire tunnel spirits. Get out of my head, I said. Say that. Get out of my head. 
Fire eternal. Fire eternal. Come out. Fire eternal. Come out. You get out of there right now. I told you to come out. I told you to come out of there. Hurry up. Take a big breath and blow. Come out, Satan. Go. There he is. Blow again. Come out of her lungs. Come out of them lungs. Come out of them lungs. Come out of them lungs. There he goes. Come out of there right now. Low self esteem. Hating my body. Self pity. There it is right there. Come on out. Self pity. Come out. Get out. Go. Come out. Go. Satan, go! Satan, go! Church demons! Church spirits, come out! Church spirits! Demons from churches, come out! Right now, go! Get out of that body, keep coughing. Come on, Smitty, keep coughing. Come on out. Hold that, sweetheart, hold that. Come out right now, go! Come out right now, everything come out. Not, not a couple, no. Everything. Get out of my body. Get me out. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Go, Satan. Come out of there. Go quickly. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Satan, lose your hold. You get out of my head. I hate your guts. Come out of me. Bible demons. Bible demons. Come out. Church demons out now. Demons from churches, prayer tunnels, fire tunnels, seminar demons come out. Prophetic demons, fake apostles, fake, fake prophets come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out of there now. Fake apostles, fake prophets. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. You get out of that body right now. Come out of the man of God. There he comes. There he is. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body quickly. Leave the woman of God. Get out of there. Come out of the cellar. Come out of the wood. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Get out of there quicker. Come out faster. Loose this man of God right now. Lucy, loose the spinal column. Loose that injury. Satan, come out in Jesus' name. Hurry up. Go. Prophetic demons, come out. Come out. Todd Bentley demons, come out. Bethel demons, Bethel spirits, come out. Right now. Come out. Come out, spirits. Go. Right now. Come out now. Take command. Just take command. There you go. Come out of me, devil. Come out of there right now. You get out of my head right this second. Get out of my body right now. You get out of my body right this second. Come out of my head. Come out right now. Say that, sweetheart. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Go. Come out of my stomach. You get out of my stomach right now in the name of the Lord. I'm turning my life over to Jesus. You can't stop me. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Tell you what I need prayer for, man. Come out. What? There's been a lot of rejection around me, my family, my landlord. All right. Like, it just the, when did it start? Investment. What age? They've been going on over 35 years. Yeah, when did it start? I'm not even allowed in the office where I live. Yeah, when did the rejection start? What age? Oh. Five, six, seven. Who, who's the first one? My father, my sister, What's your dad's my brother, name? Cyril, my whole guy. What's Cyril. your dad's name? Cyril. Okay, ready? Your, your dad's demons are still in here. My whole family, my well, landlord. Your dad's demons started. And my sister and brother. Yeah, your dad's demons started. I have OCD. I have major that came body in later. Pain. Yeah. They have OCD, they gave it to me. That came in later though, it's your dad. I'm in my wrist. Okay. That's yeah. not the problem. It was your dad. Yeah. My He's gotta come out brother. first. Your dad has to come out first. They're not in there. I don't yeah. want His demons. Rejection demon got in there. 
ever since middle school and high school. I was bullied. No, no, that was after your dad. Remember? Yeah. Your dad started it, and the rejection demon got in from your dad. I've been out of work sending hundreds of resumes, thousands of resumes, out over no. 13 years. That was after your dad. Everything. Everything came after your dad. And they've got all the answers. They know connections for jobs. That was all after your dad. Yeah. They've been screwed. It's your dad. Right. It's a rejection demon for your dad. He's right in there. He's right in here. My bitterness, the resentment, the OCD needs to come out now. So yeah, let's go. Totally, I've been praying against these spirits from people. Okay. Now, I'm just under attack. Just do what I tell you. Okay. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. Zero, come out of your son right now. Come on out. Come out of your son right now. We forgive you. We forgive you. We release you right now. Every rejection demon, starting with your dad, comes out right now. There, there it is. There he is. It's your dad's demon. Come out, dad. I love you. I'm going to let you go now. I love you. I'm going to let you go, dad. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you, and I release you from my soul. Pain. And anger I and pain. Sexual accident. I mean, I lost everything that was conditional, unconditional. That rejection demon stole everything you have. Love over 35 years. Yeah, you've had. God has plenty of my unconditional. Dogs were right in front my, of me by my parents. Yeah, it's all started with your dad. It's all started with your dad. That that was the beginning of the avalanche. The rest of the demons got in after your dad. Got in after your dad. Come on. Let your tears go. Spirit, I command you to come out of me right now. Every rejection demon, starting with my dad, then, then my sisters and brothers, then the bullies, then the bullies. That was the next one. Rejection, come out. Come on out. Dad, come out. Brothers and sisters, come out. Bullies, that was the next one. Come out. We're going in order. We're going in order. Come on. Come out. Out. I let my dad go. I let those bullies go. I forgive them. Good. Just go in order. Go in order. Good. Forgive every one of them. Go in order. Go in order. I forgive my mom and my dad. I forgive them for what they've done to me. And I release them from my soul. And I command the spirits from friends to come out of me. Come out of my mind. Lift out of my head. Right now. All right, take a breath and blow. Blow, keep blowing. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out of there. Go in order. Just go in order. Let your tears go. Go in order. Come out of there. Come out, Satan. Come out right now. Good. Go. You're doing perfect now. Let your tears go. Go in order. First your dad, then your brother and sister, then the bullies. Come on, then go to the next one. Forgiving every one of them. Get out of my head, I told you. I want my mind back. I'm taking my career back. I'm not going to die disabled. I'm not going to die disabled. I command you to come out of my head. OCD, out. Come out right now. OCD for my dad and bullies. Come out. Get out of my head. Come out of my body right now. Come out of there. Come out of my body right now. Come on out. I forgive my parents. I forgive those people in France. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Come on now. What's going on here? What's wrong with you? Uh, it's hard. It's hard. I feel like I need one. Oh, okay. You can have one of those too. Go get my card and call me. Yeah, of course. 
Yeah. But I can tell you a little bit. Yeah, what is it? But, you know, I, I, I know I have the Holy Spirit. I'm saved. I, I, yeah. I, I talk to my ways. But, yeah. um, I, you know, my old life, I, always, I used to be worldly and I fornicated. And I feel like I have a marine spirit in me. Because at night, yeah. when I don't pray sometimes and I forget, it, it comes. Yeah. Yeah. So he right, he's right down here. Okay. Here, raise your hands. Let's start on him. Dear Lord Jesus, I am so incredibly sorry that I destroyed myself. I opened my soul and my body to a man who had demons. I let him in. It was the worst mistake I ever made. And I know when I did that, I hurt you because you love me so much. You were hurt when I hurt myself. I'm asking you, Father. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I want this man's evil spirit out of my body. I want him out of my body. I want him out of my body. I want this lust demon I picked up from him. It transferred in my vagina. It came up here. He comes at me at night. He fondles me. It's him. It's him. And I did it. But I'm repenting of it now. And I'm taking authority over this ugly marine spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. You come on my body right now. Get out of my head right this second. Do you hear me? Come on my body right now. You let me go. You let my brain go right this second. You let my brain go. You get out of my body right now. I hate you. Go now. I hate you. Go now. Go now. No, no, there's some oh, more. When there's I get deliverance, um, yeah. I get a lot of headaches in my head. No, my that's head them. Head. They move up here and then they try and distract you. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hello? Come out of there right now. <laughs> there they come. Come on out. Quickly. Come out of there. Come out of there. Hey, you. I bet you come out of there right now. You sexual perversion monster. I bind your power. I command lesbianism to come out of there right now. There he is. Keep belching. Come out right now. You stinking lesbian spirit. Come out of there right now. I am not a lesbian. Get out of my body. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up and come out of my body right now. Hurry up. I want you out of my head right this second. You hear me? I'm not dying disabled. I hate you. Come out of my body right now. I hate you. I hate my sin. I, I've turned from it. Get out of my body right now. Father God, I ask you to give this beautiful woman the gift of hate. Give her the gift of hate for what that demon is doing to her. She hates him now. She hates him now. Good. Get out of there. Come out right now. Keep going. Every rejection demon. No. You start in order and then you go forward. You're doing, you're doing it wrong. Hey, you're doing it wrong. Start. You start in order. I need. I need to be where I can be working in my media work. I'm, I'm wasting my life here. God only knows that. I've we been have, around plagues. I've been around parasites. We got people. We like sucking no. people that are trying to. That came after the root cause, the root problem. You started with your dad, and then so I have siblings too. I have okay. unforgiveness. Okay, I don't let's forgive repent you. of that because we there's no way you're going to get healed with that in there. So let's go go there. Okay, go ahead. I repent of it. That's a sin. I told you to get out of my body right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of my head. Come out of my head right the second. You, you get out of my head right now. Did you hear me? Atta girl. Come out of my body right now. Let me go. Let me go. Out. Come out of there right now. Out. Out you go. Come out of my head. You get out of my head. Headache, come out of my head right now. Head pain, come. There it comes. Good. Anger. Anger. Rage. Hiding there. Rage hides in there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You speak in tongues? Go. 
Louder. Come in, Holy Spirit. Come in, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, come in. There you go, Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Ghost, come in. <coughs> Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Spirit, come in now. Come on in. Come in. Jesus, get out. Glory to God. Get out of the body right now. Come on, sweetheart. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out right now. Get out. Kundalini. Get out. You get out of my body right now. Dad, I hate, I hate your demons. Dad, I forgive you. Control, manipulation, domination. Go! Don't get out of my head right now. Ouch! You get out of my body right now. You're demon of fear. Fear of man. Abuse of man. Verbal abuse. Get out of my head right now. Get out of my head right now. Hating myself. Hating my body. Self-pity. Hating my life. Come out now. Childhood hate. Come out of my body. Bad, ugly men with demons. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up. You get out of my body right now, I said. Come on out. Right now. I want you out now at any cost. Any cost right now. Go now. Go now. Take a big cough. Take a big cough. There you go. Come on. Here it comes. Come on out. Come on right now. Keep going. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Go in Jesus' name. Go now. Satan, go. Get out of body. Hurry up. Hurry up. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is just. He will forgive us our sins. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just confess it. Arrogance. Pride. Know it all. Come out. Right now, I said. Just confess it. Come on. You got a coward spirit in there. You got a coward spirit in there. You won't come for prayer because you got a coward spirit. God. God has not given us a spirit of cowardice. But he gave you love. He gave you power. He gave you a sound mind. You are a coward. You have a coward demon. Fight through that thing. Fight through that thing. Take your authority. What's wrong with this guy? Uh, I'm just he's confessing abortion right now. You what? He's confessing abortion. So I told him to pray about just just to the father for. Uh, All right. He had five, five abortions. He's got a lot of pain in his stomach. He's been here like twenty times. No. And he hasn't been healed. He's sorry never, for it. Yes, but he never that. Yes. yes, yes, and he just said right now, he goes, he goes something, something I never thought about, he goes, you know, I've been a Christian for 20 years, but I just never confess my abortion. Ooh, that's you a know, murder spirit. Exactly. He's speaking English. Yeah, he speaks English. Oh. Hey, that's a murder demon in your gut there, son. This, it's going to end badly for you. This thing's got to come out of there. you got to turn on him. You murdered somebody. God, forgive this brother. I know you love him. I know you care about him. Forgive him, Lord, and have mercy on him. Give him the gift of hate right now. The gift of hate to clean out his temple of this murder spirit. Hatred for that murder spirit. Come on, ladies. You had an abortion. Yeah, as soon as you had that abortion, a spirit of murder entered your body. That's a murder spirit. Hey, you had a girlfriend that got pregnant. You told her to go get an abortion. You got one too, son. You got one too. You aborted somebody. You murdered somebody. Come on. Just confess it. Right now, just confess it. Father God, I murdered someone. I am so sorry. I played God. I played God. I murdered someone and took their life. I played God. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Father God, I pray for the gift of godly sorrow for these saints. You must have godly sorrow to be delivered from demons. If you have no godly sorrow, 
and you're just angry and frustrated, you're going to keep your demons the rest of your life. You got to have godly sorrow for what you've done. Come on. Oh God, forgive me. God have mercy on my soul. God have mercy on my soul. God have mercy. You still like your sin. That's why you can't get rid of the demons. Todd Bentley. He said he didn't like the sin, but he actually did. He liked it. There's something about it. He liked. He liked the sex. <clears throat> He liked the orgasms. He liked the excitement of it. See, if you still like your sin, you got to die with your sin. You got to hate your sin. You got to hate it. You got to hate it. Come on. Come on. Ask God to give you the gift of hate. Satan, I hate your works. I hate your sin. I hate evil. I hate it. I hate it. Come on. You hate it. I hate it. I hate living in sin. I hate being angry. I hate not listening. I hate rebellion. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. Witchcraft will damn your soul to hell. Witchcraft will damn your soul to hell. Witchcraft is the worst, the worst sin. Witchcraft is the worst sin. Rebellion. Witchcraft will destroy you and it will infect your children. Witchcraft demons never stay with one person, they always transfer to others in your family. Witchcraft demons collect human lives. Witchcraft demons collect human lives and they destroy them. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Come on, repent of it. Repent of it. Rebellion, arrogance, pride. Those are the sins of Satan. Arrogance, pride. Come out of me. Right now, vanity. <laughs> you get out of my body right now. Did you hear me? Childhood self hatred. Come on, there. there he is. Come on, come on, Sonic. There it is. Childhood self hatred. Come on, over spine. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on, that a girl. Let your tears go. That's the spirit of God touching you. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. You hated yourself, and that hurt the Lord because He's always loved you. You hated your body. That hurt the Lord. He's always loved your body. He loves you. He loves your body. He loves everything about you. He wants to help you. Help is on the way right now. Go. Holy Spirit, touch the woman of God. Help is on the way right now. There it is. Grief and sorrow. Come out. Grief and sorrow. Come on out. Come on. Every prophetic spirit. Come on. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. Yeah, girl. Keep coughing. Come on. Satan. Satan, loose your hold. Hold that. Hold that. Come out, devil. Come out of her. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Quickly. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out of that body. Get out of there quickly. Come out of her throat. Poison. Come out of there. Poison. There it comes. The poison's coming up right now. That's it right there. That's demonic poison. Come out. Witchcraft and sorcery in her family tree. Come out. Santeria. Come out. There he is. Santeria coming out now. Idol worshipers. All the way back. All the way back. Ten generations of wickedness. Go. Get out of her body right now. Come on. Inside. There it goes. Glory to God. Come on out. Honey, you got the Holy Ghost all over you. Take it. 
You got the spirit of God all over you. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of it right now. Witchcraft, go. Witchcraft of her grandmother. Grandma. There she comes. There she comes. Grandma, come out of that body right now. Witchcraft from Grandma, I command you. Loose a woman of God. Loose a woman of God. Come out. There they come. Glory to God. Come on out. Out of there. Idol worship back 10 generations. Go. Come on, we're stomach right now. There he comes. Poison. Demonic poison. Go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Come out of her spine. Come out of her spine. Come out of her spine. Go in Jesus' name. Come out of her hips right now. Go! There they go. Come out, you rotten devils. You filthy demons. You collapse. Jesus' mighty name. Collapse. Collapse in the woman of God. Fall apart, you filthy spirits. Fall apart quickly. You get out of there right now. Self hatred. Come out. Self hatred. There it goes. Self hatred. Come. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Father loves her. You lied to her. Come out. You liar. You lie. Rejection demon. I command you. Rejection from her parents. Come out. Every demon from her mother. Go. Mother. There she goes. Every demon from mother. Come out. Go in Jesus' holy name. You sexual child abuser, come out of that body right now. Go. Sex abuse. Rape. Come out. Rape. Come out of that body. Rapist. Out. Come out. There it goes. Come out of there. Come out of there, you man hater. Go. Man hater, out. There it goes. Come out of that body right now. Come out in the Jesus' holy name. Get out of the woman of God. Get out of her face. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her breast right now. Go. Come out of her breast. Come out of her joints. Come out of them joints. Come out of her hips. Get out of that body. Come out of her uterus right now. Go. Go in Jesus' name. You speak in tongues? Go ahead. Oh, come on, devil. Here comes another one. Go. There he comes. These demons are getting routed, sweetheart. You got the anointing. Take it. You got the anointing. Take it. You got the love of God on you. Take it. Every ugly man that ever touched this body, come out now. Get out of there, you pervert. Come on, you pervert. There's a pervert. Here he comes. Go. Get out of there, you pervert. <laughs> come on, ladies. Oral sex demons. Come out of your mouth. Oral sex. Come out of there. Get out of that body. Come on right now. Get out of there quick. Come on. I'll hurry up. <laughs> Oral sex. Anal sex. Sexual perversion. You child killer, I bind your power. You get out of the body right now. You're a baby killer. You let the man of God go. You baby killer. You're a baby killer. Come out of there right now, quick. Come out, you baby killer. You'll get out of that body right now. Every religious demon, every prophetic demon, every seminar spirit, every church demon, go. Every church demon, I bind your power right now. Religion. Church, come out in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
all the demons from your seminar the seminar the fire tunnel the prayer tunnel whatever it is you keep keep belching come on that bunny out get out of that bunny go there it comes come on out quickly come out quick there it comes quickly quicker get out of that body you come out of there you witch get out right now come out get out of that body get out of her spine Go on that spine. Come on that spine. Come on, ladies. You experimented with your sexuality. You shouldn't have done it. Lesbian spirits, come out of there. You les lesbian, come out. Lesbian demons, I command you. Get out of there. Right now. Come out right now. You hear me? Every spirit from a lesbian. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Come on out. Come out right now. Hurry up. Every mind control spirit. I bind your power right now. I command you to shut your mouth and stop talking to me. Stop putting lies in my mind. Stop putting religious thoughts in my mind. Stop quoting Bible verses. You rotten demons, I command you to stop quoting Bible verses. Stop it in Jesus' name. Stop. Stop quoting the Bible to me. You filthy religious spirit, I bind your power. Stop quoting the Bible. Stop telling me I'm fine. Stop telling me there's nothing wrong with me. Then, then stop telling me there is something wrong with you. Stop telling me you double-minded monster. You double-minded evil spirit. Get out of my head. Double-mindedness. Go. You woman hater. Go. You man hater. Get out of there. <laughs> you come out of my body right this second. Do you hear me, you rotten guy? Speak it out. Speak it out, sweetie. Feel that? Feel that joy there? That's the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. Giggle it out. Come on, open your heart. And a girl. Thank you, Jesus. That's the Spirit of God on you. Thank you, Lord. Honey, you got you're getting healed tonight. Sweetheart, you're getting healed tonight. This is your night to get healed. You get healed tonight. YouTubers, listen to me. The Holy Ghost has no time or space deficits. Just put your hand in your body. You're watching on YouTube. Just put your hand right where your body or by your pain is. Right there. Put your hand in your body. You got a lust problem. Reach down and grab your groin. Reach down and grab your groin. I command this spirit of lust. Come out. Come out. You got pain in your body. Reach down and put your hand on your knees, your back. Where, where's your pain? Spirit of infirmity, I bind your power. Come out. Pain, come out of me. Thus saith the Lord. Yo, get out of my body right now. You get out of my body right this second. You get out of my body right now. YouTubers, listen to me. Go to the website right now, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the teaching button at the top of the website. And read the article on how Satan controls the mind. How Satan controls the mind. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. Read the article on the website. Satan's counterattack. You will get hit within 48 hours. If you started your deliverance tonight, you cannot stop it. If you started, you cannot stop. Because the demons will come back and they will bring stronger demons than the ones you had before. 
Matthew 12, Luke 11. The demons will come back. They will be stronger than the ones you cast out. Once you start your deliverance, you cannot stop it. Matthew chapter 12, when a demon leaves a person, it goes through dry or deserty places. When it does not find a place of rest, it comes back to its house from whence it came and finds the house in better condition than when it was cast out or left. So they go out and they get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other spirits. And they pick out spirits worse than they are because they don't want to run the risk of getting kicked out again. So they bring in reinforcements. If you have started your deliverance and the demons told you like they told poor Todd Bentley, hey, you're delivered. You don't have demons anymore. You're good to go. They're lying to you. That's what the devil does. He is a liar and the father of lies. They're lying to you. If you believe those lies, you will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times worse potentially. Do not go to a prophetic service or a charismatic service and let someone put their hands on you and impart or download something into you. You are running the risk of picking up a familiar spirit, a kundalini spirit. Once that spirit gets in, they will impersonate the Holy Spirit and they will start giving you God speak. They will give you godly ideas. They will quote scriptures to you. They will tell you to do good things. They will suck you in with good things. And when they train you to listen to them, they will then bring in the nasties. They will bring in hell on fire. You will face hell on fire. They don't come in with hell right away. They come in with good things. See? It's like that person you married the first time. Remember that? They seemed like such a nice person. Oh, they had a nice sense of humor. Oh, you got along so well. That person was a plant of Satan. You married that person and hell came to breakfast because that person was a plant. Demons come at you with positive things. Familiar spirits are too smart to come at you with something you're going to catch. They come at with you with something you won't catch, something you won't see, something positive, something good. Hey, why don't you minister? go minister to the homeless? Oh, that's great. You go down to the homeless and pick up a demon ten times worse than the one you got. Brilliant. They come to you with good things. They're too smart to do it the other way around. YouTubers, listen to me. These are the secrets of the spirit world. Many of you hate me tonight because of what I taught on. You see me as a heretic. I am not a heretic. The Holy Ghost shows up here every single service. There is no other facility anywhere in the state of Arizona or in America that I know of where the Holy Ghost shows up at every single service. Why? Because we roll out the red carpet for him. We cater to him. He wants people to repent. He wants to hear the word of God unadulterated. He wants you to preach the word of God without whoring it out to somebody so you can get money or favors or benefits from them. He wants people to preach God's word regardless of the consequences. Why? He wants integrity. He wants to develop your character. Your anointing will simply follow that. You don't have to worry about your anointing. You'll get that. That'll just flow in naturally. Your character and your integrity is what he wants to build in you. So you will become a very dangerous poison in the spirit world. That is God's will for your life to become a very dangerous poison. 
you are become dangerous to Satan. Not his punching bag, which you've been for the last 30 years. You're good at being a punching bag. I got news for you. Your punching bag days are over. You are now going to start doing the punching. You are going to turn the tables on the devil. You've taken enough beatings. You've taken enough beatings. You're out of beatings. Now you're going to start dishing the beatings out. You go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Read those articles. They're invaluable. Guard your heart, friend, from false doctrines. Guard your heart from these hucksters on TV. They're plying you with fake benefits. They're making merchandise out of you to get benefits out of you. Thus saith the Lord. Guard your hearts and do what's right. Follow your integrity. Your anointing will follow after that. You won't have to worry about it. That'll just grow naturally. Character must be focused on. You got work on your character. You got to focus on your integrity. Your anointing will come naturally from God. Naturally from God. Faith healing service next Friday night. Healing service right here at 7 p.m. Pacific and Mountain Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, healing service next Friday here. See you next time.